All right, so um, going to uh, finish off a little bit talking about like, what will be happening next week in terms of the exam. And six total problems for that exam. You'll have four hours to finish. Uh, the main uh, purpose behind that will be just to give you extra technical time in case there's issues or problems. It obviously, I mean, technically it won't take four hours. It's, uh, I've, we've had some problems with uh, connections and other issues like that, so um, that allows that to kind of be worked out. And the first thing I'd like to talk about now would be uh, going back to graphs for a little bit and talk about planar graphs and graph coloring. Now we did the cut puzzle before, and if I would take a cut puzzle and say that I want to cut all of these uh, black line segments on the inside. So if I could have a path that would cut each and every one of those, if I had like a scissors and I want to cut through each of these guys and I want to make it so that I never have to stop. And if I would begin and end at the same place, that would be an Euler circuit. If I would begin and end at different places, that would be an Euler path. And if I would have such a thing, I'm just assuming that I'm not going to be cutting the outside, just the inside here. And one of the approaches to that was to turn this into an Euler path, Euler circuit problem was that every region itself could be considered a vertex. And then two regions are connected if they share a boundary, if they share this line segment, which means that there is a edge in between those regions. So similarly, every one of these, these are the region labels. Those are the region labels written as vertices. So one of the things you can do is that you could always consider, you can flip between vertices, edges, edges, vertices, and making these associated graphs by going from maps to a graph or to however you choose to look at it and say whatever you call a vertex, which I'm calling a region, and whatever you choose to call an edge, which is a line segment in between, you can represent things as graphs. And then if I would look over here and say, is there a path that goes through? And what we would do is look at everybody and look for their degrees. And so degree two is even, degree two is even, one, two, three, that's a degree four, one, two, three, four, degree four. Well, degree three, degree three, so right there is an odd and there is an odd. So that tells us that I don't have a circuit, but I may have a path. One, two, three, four, that's still even, one, two, oh, there is an odd, there is an odd, there is an odd there's an odd and we have a even number of odds but since we don't have exactly two odds what I know is there's not an Euler path so for this particular puzzle because of this there is no Euler path there is no Euler circuit and so as, as a cut puzzle goes the answer would be no right but that was what we did before now what we're going to talk about now is looking at these graphs as well, there's other questions that we could ask. One question that we could ask is what's called planar. And the planar concept for a question is if I'm looking at a graph, is it possible for me to draw this graph using vertices and edges so that no edge crosses another edge? And the reason why this is called planar is you could imagine that every vertex is a contact point and every edge is a metal trace on a circuit board. So obviously if, if I would have a contact point, contact point, contact point, contact point. If I put a metal trace here like this, I'll short circuit it. So I can't do that. What I need to do is go around it so that I don't cross the wires. Right? When you do circuit boards, those circuits, those traces are literally wires on a plane. And wires can't cross one another uh, without causing obviously issues in terms of short circuiting. So the idea of planar is, is it possible for me to draw my edges in such a way so that one edge never touches another edge? If the answer is yes, it's planar. If the answer is never, you can't do this, it would be non-planar. Now you could have a planar graph, right? Like this is a planar graph. But I obviously could have drawn this quote unquote wrong. That is planar. And this is, well, it's not, 
planar because it has a short circuit. But since it's isomorphic to this one, I wouldn't say that it's non-planar. It's just that it could be drawn wrong. So we always assume that we're gonna try to draw it right. If I draw it right, and the best I can do is definitely have it be drawn in a plane so it doesn't short circuit, it's a planar graph. If it's impossible for me to ever draw it in an isomorphic way that it never short circuits, then it would be a non-planar graph. And so that's one question. The second question we have is if we're looking at things, and this looks more towards the map concept usually, and that's where it historically came from, but it would be the same thing as here because these regions are also vertices. And the question is, can I take a map and if each of these is a city state and I want to basically take a map and I want to color it, obviously this city is not the same same as these city states, so I would like to use a different color. And so if I use that color for green and then I'm going to use this color blue, well, since this side doesn't touch that side, I could get away with having this one be blue as well because they don't share a border. And then I could say, well, this one here, this doesn't share a border with this, so that one I could actually have as a, as a green. Actually, I picked gray. Missed it. I could pick green on this one. But now five shares a border with both the blue and the green. So it can't be blue or green, so I have to have another color. And so let's make this guy red. And then I could go through here and I would draw maps and the map needs to be colored in. And there was an actual classic map problem, which is if you're a map maker, how many colors do you need? If you go through it and do things like you start off small and you make his first neighbor a different color, but if they don't share a border, go ahead and pick a color you've already used as long as it doesn't actually share a border. Now, so I go green, blue, blue, green, those are fine. That's a red now because it shares blue and green. But now I look at 11 and I notice 11, it shares with green and red, but not blue. So I could color this one here in blue. And so far I'm getting by with, and now that means that the nine and 10 can't be blue, but they're neighbors with each other. So um, they can't both be the same color. So if I make this one a red, it's going to have to be this one here being green. And then we would continue on with the process as we go through it. And it looks like if I'd finish it out, it would like I could get by with just red, green, and blue. It looks like I only need three colors. And that's the idea of a coloring uh, question. It's trying to find how many colors do you really need. Now, looking back at this one, this would be the same thing. Oops, you were supposed to be red. I erased it. So that would be the same thing as go over here. And if I would color a vertex according to the color of the region it represents, if I would make him red, but then four was green, and one was green, and three and two were both blue, right? Then it's like coloring the vertices and neighbors can't be same color. Coloring regions of a map and the neighbors can't be same color. That's the idea behind coloring. How many different colors do you have to have to be able to color a graph or to color a map? And they both come from, we could look at this in terms of, you know, playing around obviously with our our cut puzzle, which has its own map, which has a graph, and we're just, the, the earlier problems were, is there an Euler path or circuit, which is this idea of can you walk, can you walk through the t these towns or cities on a continuous path and visit everywhere exactly once, and that's an Euler path or circuit if you circuit, if you begin and end at the same place. But now we're gonna ask, well, could you draw it and not have edges short circuit? That's a planar question. Could you color it? And how many colors would you need? And that's called a, and actually that's called chromatic numbers. So, the first thing we'll talk about is planar graphs. Now, planar graphs are gonna be simple undirected graphs. And simple and undirected because if you had direction, it really doesn't matter. If it's on a plane, this is an etching, right? 
So it doesn't matter if it's a direction, we don't want the etchings to go across each other. So direction really doesn't matter in terms of etching. So we're just gonna say simple undirected graph and since it's edging, if you had multiple edges, it's like there's a connection there, why'd you draw it twice? So we're just gonna study simple undirected graphs and we don't want edges to cross. Now, this would be an example of a planar graph where I have my vertices, I have my edges, the edges do not cross. This is isomorphic. If this was one, two, three, and four, this could be one, two, three, and four. Um, these are isomorphic, but this drawing is not planar, but this drawing is planar. So when I talk about planar graphs, I don't ignore the fact that I can draw them wrong. What we do is we say, no, we ignore these. We ignore the not planar. Isomorphic graphs because I'm more interested in is is planar be is actually possible. Is there an isomorphism or a shape that allows me to actually have it be etched in a plane? And so if if you find a non-planar one, I'm really interested in no, is there is there a planar one? I mean, can I find that? So when I talk about the word non-planar. Non-planar simply means that there is no planar variant. No matter what, no matter how you draw it, you'll never be able to draw this without having crossing. And the famous example of this is the three utilities puzzle. The three utilities puzzle is you have three utilities and you have three homes. And you need to connect each utility to each house. And it's on a plane. So imagine if you're going to dig that the trench you dig goes infinitely deep, right? So if I dig this direction, I'm going to cut through those utilities. And so I'm going to be like, well, all right, so that means that if I want to connect this utility over here, or let's say I start on utility three. Um, if I go to utility three, I could, well, this one works, right? Now the question is, all right, this is a boundary to me. So I'm going to have to go around the house so that I can get to this house and then I'm gonna have to go I could go around this way I could go around the house to get to this house and okay no my red and blues aren't crossing so so far it's planar and then I could do utility three and say well what about sorry utility two and it's like utility two. well he can connect here so this house is fine. He connected 111 because he could see him all the way. This utility 111 sees him all the way. It's the middle parts that get a little bit weird. And then I go, okay, well, what if I need to go over here? All right, I can do it. But now's where we get to our problem. Why is the three utility puzzle always non-planar? And the reason why is when I look at a graph like this, I notice that my graph, as I start to connect edges, creates regions. And so there's this region, there's this region right here, there's region one, and there's this region that's between this blues and greens here, and this is region two. And so this is all region one, this is all region two, and here's region three which is in between here and then on the outside I have region four and so there's a finite area region here that's region three and there's a finite area region two there's a finite area region one and there's an infinite area region four and what I notice happens is if I want to connect this utility with this home I notice that whenever I start a path, I'm going to be within one of these regions and I'm making new regions. But when I look at this, if I go this direction, I'm entirely bounded by region two here. So if I would go this direction to get over here, I'm going to have to completely break out of region two somehow. And 
the what happens is that I would cause a short circuit. Well, if I try to go the other way into region three, the same thing happens. In other words, my other point here is always outside of either region two or region three. So there's no way for me to get to it. And it's non-planar. So no matter what, you're going to have to go into some other dimension because two dimensions are not enough. The same is true if, so in this particular graph, if I would look at it causing this problem, is this graph is actually K33. It's the complete bipartite graph where I'm taking three vertices, three vertices, and connecting everybody above and everybody below. Normally K33 looks like this, is how we normally draw it. One, two, three, one, two, three. We normally draw K33 like this. Connect everybody, connect everybody, connect everybody. That's K33, normally. But this is an attempt to make it as planar as possible, but no matter what, you're always going to have a short circuit, and so this is non-planar. Uh, K5 is also non-planar, that no matter what you do, you can't take an isomorphism where one connects to everybody, two connects to everybody, three connects to everybody, four connects to everybody. No matter what, if I would try to take this graph and you know, take an isomorphism and morph it and change it, no matter what, you're guaranteed a short circuit, no matter how much you try to move these things around. Unlike this problem, where if I started with this, I could move it around until it looked like this, which is planar. Then, one of the things that happens is the Kuratowski uh, reduction theorem. And the Kuratowski reduction theorem says that all not all non-planar graphs, no matter what, have either K5 or K33 as a subgraph. That means somewhere in there is there might be some extra, ver there are going to be extra vertices and edges going on, right? But there might be more stuff, but there's a subgraph in here that is either K5 or K3. In other words, it's really you could imagine that all of the non-planers are built from K5 or K33. So if you start off with a K33 and you start off with a K5 and then you start adding vertices and edges, it's going to stay non-planar. Um, the reduction formula simply says if you knew you had a non-planer, you could start throwing things away until you saw, you found the K5 part or you found the K33 part. That these are the fundamental pieces of all non-planar graphs. Some properties of planar graphs, so that if you do actually have a planar graph, properties of planar graphs are first, if it is planar, we have Euler's formula. And Euler's formula is this. If it's planar, you can look at a plane and you can see how many vertices you have and you can see how many edges you have and you can see the regions. You have regions bounded by the plane itself by these edges of the plane and one of them's on the outside so that's this infinite part. So for like this graph here I have three regions I can count one two three four five six vertices I have one two three four five six seven edges and then if I would go through this and say well how many vertices do you have? Well I have six. How many regions do you have? Uh, I had three. And then how many edges did you have? I had seven. And if I subtract those, I get, well, okay, two. But if I would take another problem, let's say something that's really simple, where there's only two regions. So the regions are two, the vertices are three, the edges are three. Well, vertices plus regions minus edges, that's still two. Well, let's try something, I don't know, say a little more complicated where I'm having this, like this isn't doing any enclosed, so I still have region 1, region 2, region 3, because that's all this outside. So I have still three regions, but I made, boy, I made a m lot more edges and a lot more vertices, and I count my vertices. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven vertices. 
And what about my edges? I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight edges. No short circuits. And so my vertices are seven plus three regions, which is 10, minus eight. That's still two. And it's interesting that no matter what, this is Euler's formula, it's always two. <laughs> that no matter what, if you draw a graph that's planar, it's going to break the, the entire plane up into regions. It'll create, it's like a map. It'll create maps of being cities inside. The outside of the map is one of the regions. And if you count your vertices and your edges, no matter what, you're going to get, if you say number of vertices, number of regions, subtract the edges, you're always going to get two. And I could go back to my original problem, right? We have regions here, and I actually have 12 regions, right? Because I have the outside. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 regions. So there's 12 regions here. How many vertices? And so you would go through and count your vertices of, of your map, right? And this would be a planar graph if I'm looking at it. And there'd be vertices of this particular city map, of this planar map. We count it up, and no matter what, you're going to get two as well. Well, this is a, it's based on this, but this is also a planar graph. And I have a region, 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 a region. I have nine regions, right? Whoops. Did I count the one on the inside? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine regions. And you can count your vertices. You can count your edges. And you're going to find out that Euler's formula holds throughout this problem. So, um, that's a one feature of planar graphs is that this formula will always be true. No matter how you draw it, if it's a planar graph, that will always be true. Not only is that true, we also have, it's true that there's a boundary on edges. So that no matter what you draw, you don't have an unlimited number of edges that happen, right? And it would make sense that if you have too many edges, is when you start to get short circuits. And so by having a planar graph, it guarantees that you don't have short circuits, which means that there's some sort of upper bound. The more vertices you have, and then you need to start connecting them. And if you start connecting, if you start to have too many edges, what's gonna happen is you're going to say, connect these guys, I already connected that. If I have any more edges here, if I want to connect things that haven't been yet connected, what's going to happen is I'm going to start to short circuit across other edges. And this inequality allows us to understand what the boundary is. So no matter what, your, the number of edges you have, if it is planar, have to be less than or equal to three times the number of vertices minus six. And so that's the upper bound of what we have. So like we go right here. So here's a problem, and so how many vertices do we have? Seven, so what's three times seven? 21, what's 21 minus six? 15, so the edges have to be less than 15, I only have eight. In other words, if it's planar, we can get up to 15 edges, at which point beyond that, you're gonna short circuit. And that's what this inequality tells us. The other is we actually have a bound on a vertex degree. In other, if, if we bound the number of edges, like how you can be connected, you're also going to bound the degrees that happen with a particular vertex. And the best that you can do is um, there's going to have to be some vertices that are have not a lot of connections. And what we know is in all, this is almost a very, it's interesting how this is a very fixed number, in all planar graphs, they're going to have to have a vertex, one or more vertices, whose degree is always less than or equal to five. You can have degrees that are very high, like this, right? Here'd be a planar graph, which has all these sorts of high degree. It's like this is the beginning of a wheel, right? We're actually, let's go ahead and make a wheel, right? So you have a wheel, and that a wheel is a planar graph. Right, and you have the, the axle of the wheel has a very high degree. 
but if it's planar, we know that there's going to have to be some vertices of low degree, and the highest you can get is, is five for the lowest of the degrees. And so this puts a, a bottom side. The bottom degrees that you have, you're going to have to have some that are short, like that's a three, and that's definitely less than or equal to five. So it also puts a boundary on that. And so you can verify these and looking at, like uh, let's say we had W5. One, two, three, four, five. You take C5, you make your axle. And so you could go through this and you would have this particular thing and you could verify each of these. What's the cardinality of vertices? Six. What's the cardinality of edges? Well, I have the outer part, one, two, three, four, five, and then my inner part, five. I have 10 edges. Uh, how many regions do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, and then the outside, I have six regions. So I could verify that, well, one, this is easy. There's a degree three, he's less than five. It has at least one, it actually has five that are less than five. So you could verify the bounds, you could verify the bound on edges, that the number of edges you have are less than or equal to three times six, 18 minus six is 12, and 10 is less than 12. But you can also start to see that it's getting close to needing a short, uh, having a short circuit as we have more edges. And then you could also check Euler's formula that six plus six is 12 minus 10 is two. Euler's formula still holds. Coloring. Now, coloring itself would be uh, for a particular graph. Uh, can we, we can either look at it, it came from the map idea, which is what I talked here at the beginning. Can you color areas so that no two nations are the same color beside each other? No two nations beside each other. So what's the fewest amount of colors so that you have what looks like what normally classically is a map? is the same thing as going through here and picking colors. So if I would color this region green, it'd be the same thing as coloring this vertex green. If I color this region blue, it'd be the same thing as coloring this vertex blue. And so coloring is how many colors needed to have different colors for neighbors. If you can find it, that's called the chromatic number. And that's gonna be the smallest amount of colors necessary. Now, one of the things that we know from chromatic numbers and other parts is one of the facts that we have is that if a graph is bipartite, and look in previous sections what bipartite means is the chromatic number is always two. So if you can color a graph, whether it's planar or non-planar, doesn't matter. Chromatic numbers are for more than just planar graphs, but uh, if you can get by with only two colors, it's going to be called a bipartite graph because it becomes red team, blue team, right? It's, it's kind of a team concept. If you need more colors, right, that would be a higher chromatic number, like you know, three, four, five, etc. But here's the fun part. So for all graphs, if a graph is bipartite, you only need two colors. But if a graph is planar, no matter what, you need at most four. Now that would somewhat make sense given these limitations of the limitations on how many edges are allowed, the limitations on the highest degree that it can occur, the limitations between vertices and edges and the regions that they form. The fact that planar graphs have these restrictions and coloring is based upon neighbors across an edge and we're never allowed to have a high number of edges, that would then allow us to have a good understanding of, I bet there's a least amount of colors and well, the least amount of colors is four. So for any particular map and then any particular uh, planar graph, then the most amount of colors that you would ever need is four colors to be able to color this out. On the other hand, if I would have this problem, and I'll take it this way. If I color him green, and then I color him blue, that means I could say, well, I could actually color this one blue because he's not attached to blue, and I could actually color this one green. So I'm getting by with two colors for now. But since this is both a blue and a green, and their five is connected that I can't use blue or green, I'm gonna have to use another color and say red. And then 
this blue is attached to six and seven and they're going to have to be different colors and those aren't attached so I can make that a, a red but then I can make this one a green but if that's red and green that means eight has to be blue but if eight is blue that means nine and ten are going to have to be different colors and so that's red he's not attaching those so that's safe but that means ten has to be green <laughs> I said I thought I hit it green and since that's red and green and that's red and green oh, 11 is good enough I can actually color him blue and so what is the chromatic color number for this guy the chromatic number for this one is 3 and it satisfies it is a planar graph and it's less than or equal to 4 but this one only needed 3 so um, if it's a planar graph, uh, you're going to get by with either any number less than four. Uh, this is an example of one that's three. Um, I would simply say play with actual maps to check. You know things like maybe the USA. Look up look up maps. Maybe Kansas counties. Right? Just play around with different maps to check and you know verify yourself that it's going to be four. All right. So in terms of graphs, all we've done is simply added to the Euler discussions of you know uh, coloring as well as planar. What I'm going to expect you to be able to do is essentially draw maps and graphs, which is this, and you know by construction find chromatic numbers and by construction verify the uh, properties of bounds of vertices bounds of edges the Euler's formula like uh, I think I did that one here I, at least I talked about it but anyways to verify Euler's formula for certain different problems like like this one like make your own graphs or take graphs that have been given to you and be able to verify that all right, so I shall now pause and then restart the video and we'll talk about, have a second video for just the review.